Hey, welcome back. Today is March fit, uh, 19th, excuse me, March 19th, Friday, and on this post, I'll be telling you about the overall crypto markets, which includes Bitcoin dominance and Bitcoin price action, and see how they could potentially affect the overall altcoin markets. Before diving into Chili's, CHZ, USD, and see what exactly has gone on in here. I'll be telling you about the bullish and bearish case snails for today, as well as the short-term price prediction on this market, according to what I'm seeing on the charts. Before I begin today, if you guys are enjoying this content, make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video as I'll be keeping you updated on the latest crypto setups on my watch list, regardless if it's a good day or a bad day. If you want to support me and don't already have a Weibo brokerage account, you guys can use my referral link down below. They're still giving away two free stocks as of today upon a successful sign up and a qualifying deposit of 100 US dollars. And I'll also receive a referral bonus if you guys sign up under me. Please toss to read my full disclaimer below. I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. I'm purely sharing my own speculations and opinions on this market. I cannot trade the future, and you should always do your own due diligence before trading or investing in this market as it's extremely risky and volatile. If you have any questions or comments, please do only leave them in the comment section below, but I try my best to get as many of them as possible. Now, see what exactly is going on in this market first. Most importantly, I do take a look into Bitcoin dominance, tells me where the money could be trading into. Would it be Bitcoin, altcoins, or neither? Today, we do have Bitcoin dominance down about 0.2%. This breaks down to Bitcoin price action up almost 1%. Total altcoin market cap up almost 1.5%. Now, this is the upside of Bitcoin dominance trending downwards. I will usually see total altcoin market cap leading in gains ahead of Bitcoin. I usually emphasize Bitcoin dominance trending downwards because generally speaking, it's better for the altcoins on both the upside and downside. Because conversely speaking, on the upside of Bitcoin dominance trending upwards, I will usually see Bitcoin leading in gains ahead of total altcoin market cap. Now let's take a look into Bitcoin dominance on the three day time frame. here is still my focus. I have mentioned that there was a double bottom pattern here. One bottom, second bottom, with bullish divergence, higher low on the RSI, that's classic bullish divergence. Signaling these two green candles, we are now getting expected resistance from this 3-day 21MA here. Now, if price action on Bitcoin dominance here continues pulling back, it is generally speaking better for the altcoins. Let's take a look into Bitcoin here. As I have mentioned, there has been quite a bit of bearish divergence scenarios on the higher timeframes, starting from the three-day timeframe here. We did get a red candle here. I'd be more inclined to believe that this bearish divergence scenario is done on this time frame. when I do see a rebound with a higher high comparing to this past high right here. Weekly time frame here, it could still be playing out, but I'll be more convinced that it actually is playing out when I actually do see a weekly red candle here. Monthly time frame, we have been having bearish divergence for quite some time. However, still has yet to yield a red candle. I would not lose track of this, however, because if we actually do get one data point of a dip or even more pullbacks here on, uh, on the monthly time frame, it could mean several months of pulling back for Bitcoin and it will still have an effect on the altcoins. The multiplier of that effect when Bitcoin pulls back usually depends on how far up or down Bitcoin dominance is trending. Let's take a look into the four hour time frame here for Bitcoin. As I have mentioned, there was a cup and handle pattern. Looks like the price action broke above it before getting back into it. And now finally back above this neckline of about 58K again. If price action holds this neckline as support, the next level of resistance I can expect will be about the 60K area from past trading history and about the 62K area. Okay. Key support here I'll be looking at will be the daily 21MA, which is currently about 54K. Let's take a look into Chili's and see what exactly has gone on in here. Let's take a look from the monthly time frame down to the daily, which I consider to be macro timeframes, and see if we have any overbought RSI readings or possible bearish divergence scenarios. 
on the monthly time frame here, we are at about 98, so very overbought. I don't usually see RSI readings staying above 90 very long until a dip comes. Weekly time frame here, we are at 91, so still very overbought. Three day time frame here, we are at an RSI reading of about 86, 87. I do already see bearish divergence here comparing this high with this past high. However, lower highs on the RSI, that's classic bearish divergence. Whenever I do see bearish divergence on a specific time frame, my conservative estimates that it's going to come down to the next closest moving average. In this case, would be the 3 day 21 MA on my chart here, the blue line, which is very far down. Let's see if the if there are going to be enough buyers to actually hold this price action up and not let it drop all the way down there. Okay. On the daily time frame here, we are at an RSI reading of just about set, uh, under 70. If the price action was to make a higher high here, it does need to beat the last RSI reading of about 96, 97 to negate bearish divergence. Okay. Now, these two highs right here on the RSI, technically to me, is not bearish divergence, but it also depends on how other traders are reading this as well, because the difference is very small. Okay. If other traders are actually seeing this as bearish divergence and trading like it, I could expect the price action to come down to the next closest moving average, like I said, on the three day time frame. The daily 21 MA is pretty close to my estimated bottom trend line for this pattern I'll be talking about, this possible pattern I could be talking about. So on the daily time frame here, I don't have too much data, okay, but I do have two sets of swings up and one set of swing down. So I do see a possible falling wedge pattern that's forming. It is not validated, it's not completed, it's my early estimate because if the price action was to come down to this daily 21 MA, this daily 21 MA is pretty close to my bottom trend line and could actually keep my estimate here intact. Now, if this pattern is validated, according to Thomas Bukowski and his website, thepatternside.com, it is a 68% chance of it breaking to the upside. If it actually breaks to the upside, the measure target here, if I take into consideration of the support level, at about 40 cents fib level area, which is the next closest support, key support that's uh, closest to the daily 21 MA here, I do have a measure target of about 85 cents. Now, measure targets are theoretical approximate targets only, may actually be different in real life price action, more or less. And even though it seems like we could have a bullish formation here on the, sh on the lower time frames of the macro time frames. I will still heavily consider the RSI readings, the high RSI readings I have just pointed out on the higher time frames, because those could be very bearish signals. Now let's take a look into some of the key resistances and supports relevant to this price action right now. Immediate resistance, key resistance would be about the 60 cents fib level area, okay, which we are pretty much at it right now. Next would be about the 70 cents to 75 cents area where I see quite a few of uh, wicks here indicating past resistance. Okay, 70 to 75 cents. One at about 80 cents, I wouldn't expect too strong of resistance at about 80 cents as we only had one wick. And then right underneath a dollar here where we had two wicks here. Those are gonna be the key resistances even if it looks like the price action has broken above the pattern. Key support would be about the 50 cents FIB level area, 40 cents FIB level area, and then the daily 21 MA and see if this holds. Let's take a look into the bullish and bearish case scenarios. Bullish case scenario, now, while there are bullish case scenarios I have not accounted for, I do think this is the more probable one, okay, because of what I said about the possible bearish divergence perception here on the daily time frame, as well as the daily 21 MA being very close to my estimated bottom trend line. So the bullish case scenario, price action finishes validating this falling wedge pattern, breaks out of this pattern and go towards measure targets. 
mining the resist resistance levels I have just pointed out, and of course, some of the higher bearish signals on the higher time frames I have also pointed out. Bearish case scenario, price action breaks bottom trend line. It looks like at a lot of these price levels where it breaks the bottom trend line, I could still keep a falling wedge pattern shape intact. For example, if it breaks the bottom trend line right now and comes down to this 21 MA, it will still look like a falling wedge pattern, okay? Only if it breaks the bottom trend line closer to the end of this falling wedge pattern, I could probably say that would actually invalidate this falling wedge pattern shape. But if it breaks the bottom trend line right now, it looks like it could still be intact. Now, these are my bullish and bearish case scenarios for today. Let me know if you found it helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Let me know agreements, disagreements, feedback. I love to hear them. Hope you match your risk carefully. And if you'd like to see any more of my most recently uploaded videos on YouTube, you guys can check out my links up here on YouTube. See you next time.